In the previous part, I started to consider the advantages of using an agile methodology for developing algo systems. So let's now take a closer look at these. Firstly, it's much simpler to validate that the signal is working as it should be. So validating that you've built your logic correctly because you haven't got any other rules for filters or triggers and so on complicating the trade entry and exit. Very often at this stage, I notice that when looking at the trades that were generated on a chart, that the logic isn't quite doing what I'd originally envisaged. So I can quickly go back find out what's wrong with the logic of my code and rectify it, then perform another backtest and confirm that the problem's fixed. Secondly, even when the logic is working correctly, you'll often recognise, once you see the trades on a chart, that actually there could be a better way of implementing the signal. And this happens for me almost every time I develop a new system. Now, the important point here is that if we'd had all of the other complications of filters and triggers, stop losses and so on already implemented at this point, these would have affected the trade opens and the exits. And it would have been almost impossible to identify potential improvements for the signal in the way I do. So for me, that's a major opportunity that's lost if we hadn't taken this agile approach. And of course, we don't just check a single trade here. We need to check 10 or 15 and ensure that both long and short trades are both in that test set. So when and only when we're completely happy that we've implemented the signal in the best possible way and that it's working fully as expected, do we move on to the next stage. So here at the next stage, we might, for example, implement a trend filter. And this will mean that trades are only ever taken in the direction, let's say, of a prevailing trend. And other signals, when they're against the trend, get ignored. And guess what? We go through the same process again by running another backtest and then checking a number of trades from that. Now, the process here is slightly different because of the fact that we're dealing with a filter now. Here we need to compare the trades that were generated in this backtest at stage one with the trades that are generated in the second test here using the trend filter. So it's necessary to make sure that the trades that were taken when they were in the direction of the prevailing trend are identical to the trades that were produced here in this first backtest. But of course, we also need to check the opposite use case so that signals that were initially executed in the first test, but were against the prevailing trend, no longer get opened here now that we're using a trend filter. So once more, we're looking for the same two things that we looked for in the previous stage. We're looking to see that firstly, the logic has been implemented in the code correctly. And we're also looking out for clues from the trades about whether the logic can be improved in any way. But there's a third factor that we also need to take into consideration now. And this is whether the filter actually made a significant improvement to the overall backtest results. If it didn't, then clearly we need to rethink the use of it. Do we need to either modify it so that it does result in an improvement? Or maybe we even need to disregard the filter entirely. Now, removing a component from your system is sometimes a difficult thing to do, especially when you've put a lot of thought and effort into it. But if it doesn't improve the results, then you need to accept that it either needs changing or throwing away. But hopefully you can see again here that if we'd taken the top approach where we developed the whole algo system before we backtested it, you might have thought that it was this strategy as a whole that wasn't working, when in actual fact it was just a problem with one component, for example, the trend filter. Okay, so when and only when we're convinced that everything is optimal and the trend filter is working as it should and it's adding sufficient benefit to the system, can we move on to the next stage? So for example, this might be a volatility filter. And after that, on the next stage, we might implement a trigger in order to fine tune the entry of our system. 
And at each and every stage, we do the same validation of the logic, the same identification of improvements, and the same determination of whether the latest component is worth having in the strategy or not. So I'm hoping that you can see how using this iterative, agile methodology is so much better than building the whole algo before you start your backtesting. I've been using this methodology now for probably the last five or six years, and I've benefited tremendously from it. And so that's it for this episode. I'm hoping that you've been able to take something of value from today so that you can start making improvements to your own algo development processes. If you have, then please remember to give me a thumbs up. And until next time, trade safe.